Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to look at hypothesis testing for a population mean if we have an unknown population standard deviation or unknown sigma. Now, if you watched our introduction to hypothesis testing video, then these steps should look very familiar. What we're going to do is just run through them and point out what is different when we don't know the population standard deviation. So steps one and two are going to be exactly the same. We are going to read our claim, write our null hypothesis, which will be h sub zero, and then it will still be about mu, and it will still be a state of equality. So we will still be writing mu equals some number. We'll then write our alternative hypothesis, or our h a, also about mu and that number. And we can fill that in with either greater than, less than, or not equal to. In step two, we're still gonna be drawing our model and shading our rejection region, but because we don't know our sigma, our population standard deviation, we are going to be working with our student T distribution. So just like in confidence intervals, when we were working with means with an unknown standard deviation, we worked with the T distribution. That's going to be the same thing here. So when we draw our picture of our model, and let's say we're doing a one-sided lower, then what we're going to be finding here is a T critical value. And our test statistic is going to be a T value. So this time that is going to be calculated by taking x bar minus mu divided by, this time we're going to use s or our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the number in our sample. Once we've got our critical t value and our test statistic, we're again going to determine if that test statistic falls into the rejection region and use that to make a decision concerning the null hypothesis, either reject if we are in the rejection region or fail to reject if we are not. And last but not least, we will state our conclusion about the claim that we were testing in the alternative hypothesis. So very similar to testing with a known standard deviation, but this time going back to that student t distribution. So let's take a look at that in action. So let's say that a new coating designed to slow corrosion is applied to 35 metal bars. The goal is to limit the corrosion to 5 millimeters of penetration. These bars are buried in soil for a specified time and the maximum penetration is then determined. The resulting sample data reveals an average of 5.27 millimeters with a standard deviation of 0.48 millimeters. Does the new coating exceed the desired limit? Use an alpha or significance level of 0.05. All right, so we've always got to start by setting up a pair of hypothesis statements. So first of all, our statement of equality. Uh, we're trying to limit to five millimeters of penetration. So we will set the null hypothesis that mu is equal to five. Next, we'll look at, we got a sample uh, at 5.27, so we're interested in, is mu really greater than five? Is that, you know, is that our alternative here? So that means we've got a one-sided test going on here. And since it's greater than, we've got a one-sided right-hand test. So the first thing that we want to do is find our t-critical value. Now with an alpha of 0.05, that means the area here to the right, or in our rejection region, is 0.05. So our t-critical value can be found using, underneath our distribution menu, or using a t table, inverse t with, we always need to feed it the area to the left, so that will be one minus 0 0.05 or 
0.95. And then we need to give inverse t the number of degrees of freedom. Remember that with the student t distribution, our degrees of freedom are always n minus 1. So if we have 35 metal bars in our sample, then our degrees of freedom will be 35 minus 1, or 34. So that value gives me 1.691. So my t critical value, or my boundary t value for my rejection region, is 1.691. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, let's calculate our test statistic, or our T star. So that's gonna be X bar minus mu over S divided by the square root of N. So for this case, that will be 5.27 minus five over, my standard deviation for my sample is 0.48, and then dividing that by the square root of a number in our sample, or square root of 35. So doing that whole calculation, we get a test statistic of 3.328. So 3.328 is definitely in our rejection region. It is definitely higher than 1.691. So that means we will reject our null hypothesis. And so what we can say is that there is sufficient evidence, or there is enough evidence, to reject the null hypothesis. That the maximum penetration is five millimeters. So in this case, it does seem that the new coding probably isn't working as well as they want. The new coding, you're actually getting higher than five, it looks like. All right, guys, well, this does it for this intro to hypothesis testing for means with an unknown standard deviation. In this video series, we're gonna do a couple more of these. So until then, we'll catch you in the next one.